Connie and Carl Milton were always so proud of everything that we kids did, and I fancied myself an artist. So when the new ecumenical newspaper, The Fig Tree, needed a graphic for their masthead and logo, my dad, who was on the steering committee, immediately thought, well, my artistic daughter can do that for us. He came home, and he explained to me what they needed. And because this was before the age of the internet, we had to go to the library and check out books to find out what fig trees looked like. There were quite a variety of fig trees. But the most impressive was the type with the giant gnarly trunk and roots and widespread foliage with all the birds of the sky lodged in its branches. And that was the one I drew. It's hard to believe that 30 years later, something that I created still endures. I love seeing it in color now, and every time I see that picture, even though I know that I'm the one that drew it all these years ago, I'm always actually reminded of my dad for whom I drew it. And my parents believe that there are so many things in this world that need doing and anyone at all can be the one to do them. Just get up and do it. My dad loved serving the fig tree and delivering it with his friends. It has been a great ecumenical joy to his life and to this community, and I hope it continues on for another 30 times 30 years. We explored many names for the newspaper when we started in 1984. The fig tree imagery fit our mission. We chose the empowering vision of Micah 4.4 that everyone should live under their own vine and fig tree in peace and unafraid. That's the image of shalom, of justice, peace, and sustainable creation. We knew what scripture said about a fig tree with only leaves and no fruit, but we realized that the stories we cover are the fruit we bear. When my husband and I started our fair trade import business in 1984, we met many quizzical faces. We wanted to create a fair trade business to partner with marginalized people in Nepal to provide fair wages and long-term trading relationships so that they could have stability in their lives, educate their children, and develop their communities. Through the Fig Tree's many in-depth articles on area fair trade events and businesses, readers have become educated on being involved in this movement. The Fig Tree empowers us as it connects us to each other, the community, and to the world. We at the uh, Emmanuel Family Life Center appreciate our partnership with the Fig Tree to help us to help people improve their quality of life. The Fig Tree spotlights key individuals in our neighborhood who embrace diversity and promotes opportunities for education, jobs, and justice. Mary Stamp started the Fig Tree in her home on a shoestring budget. And when I started Christ Kitchen, she was my hero. I felt like if she could do it, maybe I could too. In 1998, we started with two patients from Christ Clinic and a bag of pinto beans and started creating our gourmet food products. And now we sell, 16 years later, we sell our products all over the nation and employ 38 women who live in poverty currently. The fig tree has covered our progress, our women's transformations, and our ministry's growth. The fig tree is my idea of a modern gospel. Good news in our world today. When we look at the news every day, it is not easy to believe that we are abundantly blessed. But when we read the fig tree, we know that good people of integrity make a difference. Blessed are those people who do not give up. That is the story of the fig tree. Those people are the fig tree stories. When I showed people in the Friends Meeting the recent fig tree, I turned to the back page story about Caritas moving into our meeting house and said, see, it includes us. The fig tree is the most broadly ecumenical organization in our community. And that's really important because the church community seems to be easily divided. Blessed are people who share stories of people caring for and healing each other. Many people have a sense the world is falling apart. The fig tree is about people doing good, working for the sake of humanity, themselves and everyone around them. Blessed are journalists who tell the truth, writing for the sake of the story. 
Blessed are the people who are thinking good thoughts and let good deeds follow. Those are the people and their actions that you can read about in the fig tree. And while you're reading the fig tree, you feel encouraged by the fact that people just like you contribute to a better future. And thus you feel encouraged and empowered to follow their example. The fig tree tells positive, life-transforming stories of peace, hope, and justice. These stories inspire and empower me and others to transform our communities and the world. Blessed are those who set aside their self-interest to achieve the common good. I'm glad to help the fig tree empower people throughout the region through writing North Idaho stories, editing the directory, office work, deliveries, and other ways as needed. Volunteers and freelancers make it possible for the fig tree to spread hope. Blessed are people who share their lives with each other to bring hope to the world. Some will be the ones who will care. Some will listen and share. Serving God.